Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video with Project Shinobi. As you can see in this episode, what we're going to be doing is having a look at the carburetors. Um, obviously, last time we saw these was when I was actually pulling them off the bike and they've been sat on the shelf ever since. Um, but now it's come time to tear them down and give them a good clean um, and replace anything that needs replacing, obviously. Um, now, uh, they're, they're fairly straightforward to pull apart. Putting them back together again can be challenging if you don't pay attention to what goes where. Um, but yeah, we shouldn't have too many difficulties. Um, as you can see, I've numbered them because each of the components that I take out, I want to go back into the same carburetor. So I'm going to be cleaning them in my ultrasonic cleaner, which is sitting there currently warming up. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean each one um, separately because I don't want to mix any of the components. Some of the components inside may well get replaced depending upon their condition. Um, but yeah, let's, um, let's get stuck in. Right then, before we begin, there are uh, there's a number of different um, parts to these carburetors, um, a lot of pipe work and stuff like that, which we'll discuss very briefly. This one there at the bottom is the fuel inlet. Um, as you can see, it goes up between one and two and three and four. And these two hoses here um, are also linked into the fuel system. This one here is coolant. Now this, um, I believe, only applies to the UK machines. Um, uh, well, C models anyway, I don't know about the B uh, or the later ones, the E's. Uh, but certainly on the C's, I believe this only applies to the to the UK models. And what this does is it flows um, coolant through the carburetors to uh, try and avoid carb icing um, in, you know, what can be quite horrible conditions sometimes uh, in this country. On the top here, these are vent pipes, uh, just uh, to vent, obviously, uh, on the side. Got a throttle position sensor. Throttle position sensor is held in with torques, but they're security ones with a little nipple in the centre, so I've got the tools for that. Uh, and this is your idle control. Um, so yeah, all of this will be coming off, um, but I think where we'll start is with this plate here where the airbox uh, mounts into, and obviously the, the inlet trumpets, and there's just a couple of 8mm screws on each one. So that's each one of those. Now what I'll do, I'll strip off the other three and then we'll be able to take this off. There we go, there's number four. And then we can get that off. Right, the idea to these is an O-ring. Um, they'll probably get replaced. Um, as part of a rebuild kit. I don't have a rebuild kit yet. Um, I will get one, obviously, um, in order to put them back together. Okay, what we'll do we, next is we'll take the caps off the tops of the diaphragms, um, but looking at these screws, um, <laughs> three of them have been absolutely mullered by somebody in the past, which is not a surprise considering everything else we found on this bike. Um, so those two, one, uh, one, two, and three, are clearly going to take some effort to get out. These are JIS screws, they're not Phillips, and this is a JIS screwdriver, and if I give it a good, and there we go, look, that came off quite easily. Um, what's happened there, probably someone's used a Phillips, or a positive drive or something, and, and just destroyed it, so. It's worth bearing in mind that you need the correct screwdriver type. On carburetor three, obviously this is the the bracket for the choke cable, so I need to bear that in mind. Oops. Bear that in mind. But that needs to be recovered as well, and it does need to go back in the same place. Yeah, these are actually coming out all right. So I don't know why somebody had the 
had the problem and ended up mullering those other ones. Okay, if we take the cap off, there should be a spring, which there is, underneath. Um, I'm not sure where that came from, but we'll figure it out. Where did that come from? Hmm. Unsure at this stage, I'll figure where I'll figure out where that little bush came from. It just fell out of the inside, but I don't recognise it. I don't know whether it's supposed to be in one of them like so. Don't know. I didn't actually see where it came from, it just fell out as I took the cap off. Don't recognise it. Anyway, it will become apparent, I've no doubt. Okay. Then the spring and then the diaphragm itself. Now these are quite hard to get hold of so I've got to be careful with it because I don't want to tear it. And then in here we have the needle yeah there we go yeah, and, and to be fair it looks to be in fact if I didn't know better, I'd say that was fairly new. I'm not sure that that's factory original. It looks really good nick. Um, so I don't know if it's been replaced or not. So the needle. I don't think that this is a factory stock needle either because I need to look, but I believe the factory stock needle should have um, graduations on it like um, three or four little slots and a basically a circlip so that you can adjust the so that you can adjust the height of the needle and this is not adjustable so that as far as I can tell is not a factory stock needle so I may have, I may have to look into that as well it's possible that I need to look into that I mean the bike was running but yeah that's that's definitely not stock um, so yeah, that's a bit of a bit of a weird one, really. Okay, what I'm going to do now is obviously uh, carry on with the other the other three. I'm going to get the Dremel out and get those three uh, screws out, and then I'll bring you back in once we've got all of these caps off. I've uh, got all four of the caps off, um, these three screws proved to be a pain and that wasn't helped by the fact that I plugged in the Dremel, um, it was a, it's a plug-in job and it was completely sea solid, it made like a buzzing noise and didn't do anything. I've had it a while so, and, and I'm not being particularly kind to it, so <laughs> it's fit for the bin and I'll get a replacement. However, um, the way I got these out was with a uh, with a chisel, I just chiseled them, knocked them, knocked them around. They all came out fairly easily to be fair, but as you can see they're absolutely mashed. So they're fit for the bin and I've I'll obviously replaced them with uh, brand new ones on part of reassembly. Um, one thing we did talk about very briefly was that little brass bush. I figured out where it went, it was pretty obvious in the end. Uh, this screw, as I said, was for the choke and it went in that position. But the screw that holds that bracket in place is completely different to the other three screws on that cap. And that's why that little bush was there, just to... Uh, just to fill it out a little bit basically that's all it was for so it, it was pretty obvious as the, um, uh, once it became uh, well I suppose everything's obvious once it becomes apparent isn't it right then next I think what I'll do is take off some of this uh, some of this pipe work I reckon um, if I know I won't what I'll do we'll take off we'll take off the uh, the choke this choke bar here I would have expected there to have been another screw on that one for some reason there isn't um, but yeah okay and that might be another screw that we need Well, 
Okay, these should just slot onto each of the choke plungers and then come out quite easily and then take the spring off. And there we are, that is that. I'll put that down there. Okay, what next? Yeah, so I think what I'll do now is we will have a look at the uh, the coolant pipes. And again, some of these screws look to have been a bit butchered. That one doesn't look too clever, but we'll see how we get on if if needs be. I'll have to... Oh, no, she came out. I think I'm going to need to basically buy all of the screws. Aren't I? Because the man from the land of Hamphistia has been in here before me. These little these little caps basically just hold the cooler pipes in place, stop them coming out. Four of them, and then we should be able to wiggle them out. They might be a bit tight though. And obviously there'll be an O-ring on them as well. But these pipes are obviously the unions. They're obviously made of plastic and I don't want to break any of them. Yeah, the O-rings are holding them in there quite... So they, I mean, they're turning. They just don't want to come out. I don't want to break any because it means I've got to replace them. But That one just seems a bit long. I don't know if this pipe's been replaced at some point, but it seems a lot longer than it should be. So, as you can see, there's actually two O-rings on it. It's no wonder they're uh, really not giving up. There we are. We're getting there. You come. Don't be a pain. <sighs> that one doesn't want to come out at all. Crikey, that did not want to come out, but yeah, all little O-rings on there, obviously all of them will get replaced um, as well. Okay, next I think what we'll do is perhaps the fuel pipe, the vent hoses and the position sensor. Right, position sensor, it's a T20, but obviously it's a security bit, so it needs the, uh, the hole in the end in order to get these out. One, one particular tight hole. So it's got a little slot in it, and as you can see, this has got um, like flats on it, and it just sits into the slot, just like so. And then that one there will fit into inside of that one. Um, it's pretty straightforward, really. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that in with the components for 
for uh, carburetor four. Now, as you can see, I've got four quality street um, tubs here. Now, um, I'm using them because it allows me to keep uh, keep the components for each carburetor separate. And obviously, I like quality street as um, my expanding waistline will probably um, dictate, you know, show. Um, so, and it's Christmas, ain't it? Here right, it's Christmas. Right, uh, that's that. So next we can take the idle control completely off. That's going to go in with carburetor number two. And then next, I think what we'll do is all of the pipe work. It's just a few clips for me to undo. Quite a few actually. I think I'll replace all of these clips with brand new ones as well. I'm not sure how easily these are going to come off to be fair. but oh, Fairly easily. It's on very similar to the, the coolant pipes. a bit mangled and horrible and one of the o-rings is absolutely fell apart can all stay together as well and then the vent pipes so the vent pipes have these weird clips I don't even like these these are horrible these horrible little things This, this link pipe for the fuel lines, um, we'll get that off once we split the carburetors apart. Um, right, what we'll do next, I think, is take off the rail that holds them together, and then we should be able to split them. And as you can see, again, each of these have been, they've had to be used, uh, taken out with a chisel before. You can see the mark left by the chisel on each one. Uh, and instead of replacing them, they refitted them. So we'll see how we get on. Oh, no, this might be a job for the old impact impact driver, to be honest. Yeah, right. Whew. Yeah, they're tight. I'll get the impact, the impact driver. We'll give him a, we'll give him a tap. Okay. Crikey. These are tight. In fact, I think I'm actually damaging the bit. 
yet. The end of my bit's just snapped off. <sighs> okay, right, I think what I may have to do here is um, use the same tactic that the previous owner did um, and chisel them all out. Um, but obviously when I come and put them back in, I'll replace them with brand new ones. So, give me a few minutes to get these out and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've got the assembly bar um, removed, all of the screws uh, came out. Um, as you can see, that one there's got the uh, the end of my JAS impact bit, but um, I've got them all out with the, with a the chisel and a hammer. All that's uh, needed to be removed now in order to split them apart is, there's a long threaded rod effect, but it's a really long bolt um, down the center. And if I put them around the other way, that would make more sense. Take this nut off. two and three won't come apart quite easily um, it will be the pipes for the fuel and the vents and all that sort of stuff that'll pop them together but we just need to pop them apart like so and then this one we just need to get the pipe out like so and there we are put that on those and that is the carburetors split apart. Now, each of the uh, the float bowl covers are numbered as well, so I know which one's which at this stage. But what I'm going to do, pull all these out. There's little O-rings there you can just about make out. So one of them can go over there as well. These little springs, as you can see on the linkage for each of the throttles, um, there's a little spring between each each one. Just sits on there like so. Um, between uh, three and four, and one and two, just just like that. They just sit. Oops. Um, yeah, they basically just sit on that nut. And not doing very well here. Right, get that on there. Right, there we go. They sit like like that in between each of the linkages when they're when they're engaged with each other. Pretty straightforward. So what I'll do, I'll stick what number is that one? That's three. I'll stick one into number three and then one into number two. Um, and there we go. Okay, next, what we need to look at really, I think, is going to be the float bowl. Take the float bowls off, and then, uh, yeah, we can see what uh, what horrors lie inside. I mean, if they've been um, apart, uh, you know, fairly recently, hopefully the inside will be pretty clean, but um, there's no, obviously, there's no guarantees on that. And the bike has been sitting for quite some time. There may have been a bit of fuel left in there. I'm, I'm not really, really sure. Um, but I think what I'll do first, actually, is the bracket for the throttle cables on carburetor number two. Just need to come off because it's kind of in the way. There we go. Pop that in the box for number two. Help, as you can see, I mean, just having even even. Even if you were to mix the parts up, just some of the parts don't belong on other carburetors. So things like that obviously go on onto number two. And if you put it into a different box, you'd be like, where's where enough does that go? It's um 
you know it just help out when it comes to uh, when it comes to reassembling them right then um, yeah next float bowls okay I'll start on number four there's obviously four screws that hold each uh, cap on but on numbers one and four there was the little brackets that held the the pipe into the end here so that's um been those screws have obviously been removed already <sighs> this one looks a little bit mangled oh, she came out though good most of the mangling on these screws I mean they would have been tight most of it would have been caused by using the wrong type of screwdriver. Oh, I'm actually pleasantly surprised how clean that is inside. Incredibly clean. Um, they look like they've been apart fairly recently. There's a little bit of gum in the bottom there, but nothing too much. The floats are nice and free. Mm, excellent, right. Okay, so to get the float out, we need to take this screw out. You can see there's like a little rod that holds it in position, but it's held in place by this screw. And there's the valve underneath. Put the valve in there, just like that. Uh, yeah, everything's really, really nice. But I'm going to obviously give it another good clean anyway. Um, and yeah, the uh, yeah, everything's really good. I'm actually quite quite impressed with how clean everything is. Right. Um, what we'll do next is. We'll start getting the jets out and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but I think I fancy a cup of tea. So I'm going to go get a cup of tea and I might even have a couple of Quality Street while I'm there. So I'll uh, see you all in a moment. Right, what we'll do first is we'll remove the needle valve seat and this, uh, this little screw here just retains it in place. There should be an O-ring and a filter um, underneath there as well. Let me get this out off. Um, what we'll do, we'll get the main jet out. to get the needle valve seat out um, it was a little bit stuck in there as you can see the o-ring looks like it's seen better days as well uh, and the filters well, the filter looks all right but the uh, the o-rings um pretty much fit for the scrap and that's why it wouldn't come out um you can get one you can get those in the rebuild kit uh, anyway right what i'll get now is the pilot jet and the pilot jet lives right down in there i don't know if you can make it out down at the bottom there there's a you need a long flat spanner, which is quite skinny really to be able to be able to get in there. Make sure it's seated properly. Otherwise, if you if you if you shred it, then um, obviously it'll affect the running. Pop her out, and there we go. There it is. And there's the uh, and there's the pilot jet. Nice, one. perfectly good. Okay, right. Yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. Right, I think 
Um, what we've got next? We've got the um, pilot screw. That's what we need to take off next, the pilot screw. And the choke plunger. We'll get the choke plunger off as well. Okay, choke plunger. There we go. There it is. That's all there is to it. Put that down there. And then pilot screw is just in here. Now with this, this obviously um, requires setup in order to make sure that the bike runs correctly. Um, what we'll do now is I'm going to take the approximate setting that the, the bike is currently sat at and what we're going to do that is by screwing the screw in till it's lightly seated. Um, so that's half one okay so that's one turn here so, so that pilot screw was only one turn out um, um, until it was seated so yeah so one turn and now now I know it's one turn I can take it all the way out so when we put it back together we'll put it back in one turn now it's very possible that the uh, numbers two and three uh, probably one and four are set to one turn but two and three might be set to a completely different setting but obviously we'll find that out when we uh, when we come to disassemble them um, and there will be a, a a stock factory setting in the manual um, that we can look at as well um, and there there we go there's a little spring on there i actually thought there would have been an o-ring there may well be thought there would have been an o-ring sometimes there is maybe there isn't i don't know i'll have to look in the manual um but yeah that's the pilot screw and then the only thing left is this cover on the side and there'll be a little spring and a uh, an o-ring under this as well Done a mar up. Yeah, that one's that one's a little bit chewed from previous attempts. So what I'm gonna have to do is go old school with that one as well. I think. So I'll uh, I'll bring you back in a second once I've got that screw up. I loosened it off with the chisel and there we go, it's coming out perfectly fine. So that's another screw that I need to replace. Yeah, there's been an O-ring and a diaphragm and stuff like that under here. There's the little O-ring which sits just in there, look. Come on. diaphragm is quite well stuck in there to be fair but I don't want to tear it there we go she's coming there we are so that is pretty much as far as we're going to go with the actual tear down um, and this is now ready to go into the cleaner along with most of these parts things like the little diaphragm and stuff like that that's not going to go in there because I don't think the uh, cleaner solution will do them any good so what I do have and this is my little tip these are like little tea strainers for for posh people to put the tea leaves into and then infuse their tea and, and whatever these are Pretty, I, I will say that I've never made a cup of tea with these in my life. Um, but what I want to do is all of these parts I'm going to stick into this little basket and that keeps them together when they're in the uh, when they're in the cleaner. Now what I do want to do is have a quick check of this because when these wear they go they, it, it kind of the point goes more like that instead of being a perfect triangle but these look really good 
and they will obviously marry up with the with the seat um, but yeah these do look quite quite good um, yeah that's that's in perfect working order to me um, I think what I might do is put this through the cleaner but I will take the crappy old o-ring off because um, that feels it doesn't even feel like it's rubber it feels like plastic that's, that's how bad it is in fact it's it's not even bending that's how bad it is yeah it's literally just gone brittle and falling apart as you can see there so that's going to go in as well and I'll also put in the other top screws and in fact no that can go in that main basket okay the float bowl I'm gonna remove this old seal And then that can go into the basket. And I think I'll put the plunger in as it is. Yeah, the plunger can go in just like so. Along with that, the spring I think I'll put in there. And that screw. So they're all together. The float uh, probably won't need to go in at all. It'll probably be okay. And yeah, so I literally put it in just like so so all the bits the little bits are all contained in here and together um what you can do and i have seen people doing it as well and i've in fact i've done it in the past is you can put all the little bits like that into a jar um because it's not the action it's not the, the the action of the water necessarily um that affects the cleaning it's the ultrasonic action that that does it um so even putting water into a jar then put one of those little bits in a jar all the rubbish that comes off of them stays in the jar and doesn't go into the uh, water but uh, it, you know if it if it matters to you Okay, so what I want to do, take the lid off. Whoa. Quite a lot of water that was uh, stuck on the inside of the lid there. And just drop this neatly in to the solution. Now, I've uh, got it set to 50 degrees. It's currently at about 47. Um, but that'll, that'll do. Um, Anyway, guys, what I think I'll do here is I'm going to knock this uh, episode on the head because we have dragged on uh, through this quite a lot. Um, obviously, the teardown of the other three carburetors is going to be identical to that one anyway, and obviously I've just got all the bits here. Um, the bits that are in the tin, some of those will be going into the cleaner as well, um, uh, you know, later. And I'll probably do this for about half an hour on each one uh, just to make them more nice and tidy. So the next time you see these carburetors will probably be when I do the reassembly. Um, I've got to get the, you know, the, the rebuild kit and all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know how long that's going to take. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know I, uh, I enjoy tearing down carburetors and stuff. I find it quite um, therapeutic. Um, and it's also quite rewarding when you put them all back together again and they work as, the, uh, as they're intended to. So guys, thank you very much. Let's, uh, let's set the timer on this 30 minutes there we go and uh yeah i'll see you all again later for the uh for the next episode of shop uh, project shinobi take care guys bye bye now